Welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we're going to look at statistics for experimental design. So we are taking some data collected from bouncing a ball um, from different heights. So you're going to start off with a ball bouncing from 10 centimeters and then from 20 and then from 30 and then from 40. And we're only looking at four trials for this example so that we don't have too much data. So the first thing we're going to do once we collect our data is we are going to find the measures of central tendency for each of the different heights of the experiment. Well, the first measure of central tendency we're going to look at is the mean. So what is the mean? The mean is the average. So we're going to take the three, I'm sorry, the four trials, three, uh, 1.3, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4, and we're going to average those. So I'm just going to grab my calculator and we're going to add 1.3 plus 1.2 plus 1.3 plus 1.4 get a total, that's 5.2, but we're going to divide it by 4 to get the average. So the average whoops, for the from 10 centimeters was a 1.3. So that was my average. And then I'm going to repeat the same process for 2 centimeters, or for 20 centimeters. So I've got 5 was the first bounce, 5 centimeters. My second bounce was 3.1. My third bounce was 3.2 and my last bounce was 3.1. So to get that average, I'll divide 14.4 by 4 and I get 3.6. So that is my average. Now I want you to look at that data for a second. Do you notice anything odd? This first trial looks a little bit high, so that one may have been um, an error from during the actual experiment because it's actually the same height from 30. So maybe whoever dropped the ball might have dropped it from 30 instead of 20. So those are the types of things you need to look at an experiment and maybe redo a trial. Okay, so let's look at the next one and that will have an effect on our data. We have 5, 5.2, uh, 5.5, and a second 5.5 to get the height from 40 or from 30 and that's 5.3 is my average and the last one is 6.9 7.2 another 6.9 and then 7.0 all divided by 4 and that comes out to 7 centimeters even so there we go. Now we've got the average for each of the trials. Okay, the second measure of central tendency is our mode. So we're going to look in each area, the 10 centimeters, and we're going to see if we have a mode. Well, one, a mode is a value that occurs the most. So if it occurs three, four times in a large set of data, here we only have four. So let's see if any of ours repeat. Okay, we have 1.3, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4. When we notice 1.3 repeats, so that is our mode. Okay, for 20 centimeters, we have a 5, 3.1, 3.2, 3.1. So 3.1 is our mode. Uh, from 30, it's 5, 5.2, 5.5, 5.5. So we have 2 at 5.5. And the last one, 6.9, 7.2, 6.9, 7.0. So this one also has one now. If there had been a category that didn't have a repeating, we would just put none if no value occurs more than once. Okay, and now the median. The median we have to figure out by finding the middle value. So you have to take an extra step. You need to list your data in order. So I'm going to look at the 10 centimeter trials. My smallest is 1.2, then I have a 1.3, another 1.3, and then a 1.4. So what is my middle value? Well, it would fall between the second and the third term, the second and the third value. So I would average these two, and my average is 1.3. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for 20, uh, the 20 centimeters. My lowest values are 3.1 and 3.1. Then my next one is a 3.2 and then five, the one that was way out. Okay, so now we, we're gonna average these two. So when you average that, you get 3.15. Okay, 
okay, and you just add and divide by two. And then for the next one, my smallest is five, then 5.2, and then these, so they're actually listed in order. Five, 5.2, 5.5, and another 5.5. So I'm gonna average these two together. So that's, what, 10.7. So divided by two is 5.35. And my last one, uh, 6.9, 6.9, 7.0, and then 7.2. So average these two, and that's 6.95. There, so there we go. We've got a table of different measures of central tendency. So you can kind of see which ones are fairly accurate. Well, these all ended up being exactly the same. This one though, notice there's quite a variation. We have one at 3.6, you know, and the other ones are at 3.1. So that's telling me maybe my date is a little skewed. This one's fairly close. Uh, these are all falling within point, you know, two. And then these are very close. So you can see because of this oddball value in the data, we are, our measures of central tendency are actually a little more spread out. So that's how you find the measures of central tendency. We also want to take our data and we want to see its variation. How varied is it? How widespread is our data? How far apart is it? Well, the very easiest thing we can do is find the range. To find the range, we just take the highest value and the lowest value. So I can actually use my little list here because I've already got it for the mode in order from least to greatest. So I'm just going to take my highest value and subtract my lowest value. So on this one, for 10 centimeters, my range is just going to be 4.1 minus, uh, I'm sorry, 1.4 minus 1.2, which is just 0.2 centimeters. So the range is actually quite small on that one. Okay, now let's look at the second one. Okay, our high is 5 and our low is 3.1. So when we subtract that, we get 1.9 centimeters. So that's a little more spread out. Okay, then the next one is 5.5 minus the low is 5. So when I subtract that, I get 0.5 centimeters. And the last one, I have 7.2 was my largest and 6.9 was my smallest. So that one ends up being 0.3 centimeters. So as you can see, that value that was a little skewed is really throwing off my range also. The other, the other, uh, the other trials are all pretty close together except for this one. Okay, now the other measure of central tendency is standard deviation. And we're gonna have to do that one on the calculator. So there'll be a separate video for that one. Hope this video was helpful.